and thank you so much for joining us. Well, it seems that Africa Teen Geeks has been getting quite success, and you launched this organization just a couple of years ago. How have you been able to ensure that it reaches the heights that the, even the Queen of England recognizes the work that you're doing? Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm surprised as you. Because for me, Africa Teen Geeks is really a passion project. So it's something that I really do on the side. It's not my full-time job. But I, I, it's really been an honor because I think it's, it's, it's the impact that we have. And, and you know, working with kids and, and really getting them from, I don't know how to use a computer to, you know, I'm the next Mark Zuckerberg. So that's really um, been, I think, that just raising their aspirations and getting the kids to um, to start dreaming big. And I think that's really what is honoring the work. And I'm so humbled by it because it's really not me. I think it's the, it's the kids, it's what they've been able to achieve. Um, so it's, yeah, I am. You, you talk about it as a passion project. What got you started in Africa Teen Geeks? Um, I was atten attending um, an executive uh, program um, in the U.S. and I happened to be, there was an 80-year-old girl that, you know, stood up and gave a, um, a presentation of an app that she had built. She was eight and I was sitting there Googling, you know, what is happening at home, what is happening at home? And, and I found that only, uh, that, you know, 10% of our school teach IT from grade 10 upwards and the majority of the schools are in affluent um, areas and that's how Africa Teen Geek was born. Literally at that moment, started working on the presentation like this is what I want to do. Did you know before. anything about IT at that point? So as you're hearing her speak, did you know what coding was about? Did you know what um, making an app from scratch looks like, what, what it required? No, actually I didn't because my background, I studied um, um, uh, economics and stats at UCT. That's what I did. But, and, and I, to be honest, I sucked in, in computer science, the introduction to computer science that we had to do, you know, um, as a first year course. I really didn't do that. But for me, it was, I think that's a point. I really didn't really have to know as much about it. It's just I had to, I started teaching myself because I thought it was important for me to come back and start teaching the kids. And I started with my kids, we would, at, at that time it was like, it's, we started as a Mandela Day project. Mm -hmm. And the kids came away um, from Tembisa. And they, afterwards, you know, we were supposed to, to finish at 12, they didn't want to leave. We ended up leaving at four. And afterwards, I was like, so when are we coming back? When are we coming back? Mm -hmm. And then, it, it, uh, you know, I started speaking to UNISA, and they were, um, you know, kind enough to let us use their labs every Saturday. Mm -hmm. And that's really how we started, and with the kids coming in and then asking people who, you know, who were tech experts to say, guys, can you come and support us? It really started there. And, you know, now I, I can, you know, I can write a code now. Now I am like, you know. I am still, I still relatively suck compared to experts, but <laughs> I can teach the kids now. Uh, Lindy, you make it sound so easy. And one of the things that, of course, your organization does is it's both entrepreneurial and it's an NGO. So talk to us about, about that, that fine mix, because you do have a lot of people at home that are passionate about certain products and, um, you know, maybe providing certain services. But the way you make it sound, you make it sound so easy. Did you have money? Did did you have capital that came out of some way? Simply, it couldn't have just started with you hosting a few kids at your house and then saying, okay, let's go ask you, Nisa, for their lab. And they agree. And then suddenly you just have streams of kids that you're teaching. And unfortunately, literally, or fortunately, that's exactly how we started. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, when we started, we didn't have like immediate heavy money. There were no companies running to, to support us. Actually, when we went to, to, to speak to companies and tell them that we were trying to teach kids how to code, they'll tell us, no, we're focusing on medicine science. You know, that, that was not, and for, um, to a large extent, even now, there's still not a lot of companies that are really waiting there with their check signs to support us. But um, it was really the patient that I had. I I mean, I had at some point, like, you know, I had people coming and buying the lunch themselves. I bought lunch myself. My husband bought lunch myself. Classes, like, for example, we've got classes in Florida and in Sunnyside in Joburg. My husband has been running their classes in, 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 in Sunnyside and I've been right, uh, mm. running in Florida. So it wasn't really about this. So I think maybe sometimes people think, you know, I need to have that money to start. You need to have the passion. And if it's important to you, you, you know, you can bootstrap and start. And for me, I just started, if I waited to say, I'm waiting for this money that's gonna come immediately, that I would never have started. Because we, I, got, I got support later from you know, other companies, but it wasn't immediately. At the beginning, I paid for transport for the kids. 
uh, paid for their lunch. And it wasn't even like, you know, nothing fancy. Just went to, you know, like a, a retailer bought um, rolls and bought hamburger, um, but the Vienna rolls, yes, yes. yes, Vienna rolls. I bought the tomato sauce. The girls um, in our class were the one coming and preparing their lunch with me. Mm -hmm. So it, it really started there. So I think uh, sometimes we're thinking, you know, it's, it only started with that and the passion that I had, and that's when people started coming. So let's fast forward then to today. You're honoured by the king, by the queen rather, of England with this award. At the same time, you're also helping the National uh, uh, Education Department in formulating its own curriculum and policy around coding. That's quite significant. It is. I mean, I think that's that's really was my passion because you know when we started Africa Teen Geeks, we went. You know, we, we invite kids and say, tell parents bring your kids on Saturday, and what happens is I ended up with the model six kids like you know like my own because the parents could drive them there. So for me, I understood that you know I quickly learned that just providing an opportunity wasn't enough. A lot of the kids in the township access to those labs, which are in town, was an issue. Mm -hmm. So I started. I mean, I've been nagging with the, the Department of Basic education since 2014. I said, I want to get involved. Can we, you know, it was only until last year, December, where finally they were like, you know, we would like, you know, to, you to work with us in the developing and implementation of the curriculum. What, what, what have you seen as the biggest benefit of providing coding? I think even the term itself is somewhat um, mysterious, especially to people that have not been in a coding class. It sounds very IT, sounds very complicated. So when you say you're teaching kids how to code, what exactly are you teaching them and what use will the skills that they're learning benefit them, not just now, but also going into the future? Um, you know, um, teaching kids, for me, teaching kids how to code is really not just about the IT in itself. It's about teaching them how to be creative, how to make things. Because, you know, if you look at all the, the countries with the economies that we admire, you know, when even in, in Europe when there was the, you know, the, the meltdown, Germany was one of the countries that was helping others. For them, it was really, they are, you know, a, a country of makers. When you think about the German cars, you know, that's a car that we brag about. The, raising young people that are, 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 can be makers and are interested in innovation, that's important. So the coding skill is really important in terms of getting them, because when they start from the beginning, just making that first app or whatever game, whatever it is, you know, for them, they start seeing themselves as, you know what, I, I can do this. And raising aspirations so that we can start creating a generation of young people that won't be just, you know, content like me. I mean, the first time I learned how to use a computer, I was so excited that I can type. But, you know, the kids that we have now in our classes, if you tell them you can type, they're like, oh, my God, you so, you know, they don't think. So for us, it's just really making sure that they can raise their aspiration. Whatever industry they, they end up in, it could be in, in fashion, then, you know, they can start incorporating technology in terms of doing that. It could be even in social working, how can they utilize technology to, you know, to uh, change the way um, things are done? Because if you try, start, if you change the way they think, the way they approach problems, and you you start raising a, a generation of problem solvers, not, you know, a lot of like us, which is, we can see the problem, but we don't. So that's what we're trying to, to teach them. So when they come to our classes, the beginning, yes, they learn how to code, but I understand that I've got kids that want to be social workers, I've got kids that just want to be creative. So how do we then get, make sure that they can utilize technology in whatever industry that they're going to end up in and be ready for the fourth industrial revolution. All right. Well, we certainly wish you and your organization all of uh, the very best. It looks like you are um, certainly on, on the right track and uh, uh, the, the, the young girls especially that have benefited uh, from your projects are also something to watch. So, uh, Lindy, we, of course, is the founder of the Africa Teen Geeks uh, movement and organization and she was recently honoured by the Queen of England for the work, the stellar work that she's been doing in communities.